Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Prussia starting as Brandenburg for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So Prussia is one of the most beloved nations in EU4 by all players due to its excellent militarily focused national ideas and Brandenburg is often the first choice that players look to when looking to form Prussia. So, let's get into it. Brandenburg is a nation in northern Germany surrounded by some stronger nations and many weaker nations but expansion is hard and slow due to us being in the Holy Roman Empire. But by using this guide you will have an easy and fun campaign and you'll be forming Prussia in no time and getting the achievements. First we're gonna select our rivals and we're gonna pick the weakest and smallest guys on this list. So that's gonna be Magdeburg, Lüneburg and Brunswick for me. Then we're gonna go into the estates and and summon the diet and you can pick whichever agenda is best for you and then we're gonna seize land we're gonna give the clergy clerical advisory council we're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility increased levies and aristocratic counselors and we're gonna give the burgers patronage of the arts commercial advisory board and indebted to the burgers now we're gonna hire one advisor, a level one diplo rep or an improved relations guy. If you have that, I have an improved relations guy at level one, so I'm gonna take him. We're gonna pick other advisors later when we have more money. We're also gonna give our ruler and heir military command, and we're gonna hire the free company and add the other general to them. Now first I'm gonna ally Austria and then I'm gonna start improving relations with Poland so I can royal marry them and once this guy comes back I'm also gonna start doing the same with Bohemia so I can also royal marry them. And there we go I've sent both of those guys to improve relations with Bohemia and Poland and now we're gonna wait for December 12th and for a free company to finish recruiting. And there we go two months have ticked the free army is recruited and I have married both Bohemia and Poland and it was enough for just one month tick to go by for them to be willing to royal marry me thanks to the improved relations guy over here and if you have a diplo rep guy they will immediately be able to royal marry you you won't have to improve with them but now that we're royal married to them we're also gonna send poland an alliance offer but we're not gonna send one to bohemia and actually they don't even want to ally us but we will ally saxon and there we go that's how your initial diplomatic situation should look like so allied to poland austria and saxony and royal married to them as well as bohemia now why did we royal marry bohemia basically we hope that we're gonna get a hohenzollern on their throne so then we're gonna claim their throne and enforce a pu over them but even if that doesn't happen it doesn't matter we're still gonna have a great campaign this is just a little added bonus in the beginning to be able to get a PU over Bohemia. Either way, now that that diplomatic situation is out of the way, we're gonna be looking to humiliate or show strength some of our weakest rivals while we're waiting for the fate of Neumark event where the Teutonic Order sells us these two provinces. So out of my three rivals that I set, Lunenburg, Brunswick and Magdeburg, the weakest seems to be Magdeburg, they're only allied to Bremen and Lunenburg is only allied to Anhalt and actually I am gonna declare on Lunenburg since I'm gonna have to be taking down two level one forts instead of two level three forts in Magdeburg and Bremen. So I am immediately going to be declaring on Lunenburg with the humiliate rival CB. And just go siege down whichever rival you declared war on. While we're in this war, we're gonna send one of our diplomats to improve relations with our allies and the other one to curry favors with Poland. And there we go, I've sieged down both of these tiny guys and, and I'm gonna peace out on Halt now for all their money, war reps, transfer trade power, and I'm gonna make them end a rivalry for some prestige. And now I'm gonna be peacing out Lunenburg, I'm gonna humiliate them, take war reps, make them end a rivalry, and all their money up to 100 war score. And there we go, we got that humiliate rival out of the way. Since we do have five loans, since we took that burger's privilege, we're gonna go and repay like two or three of them because we need to have less than four loans for the fate of Neumark event to fire. So I'm just gonna repay three of them. Now it's time to reconsolidate our armies, wait a month or two and declare on another small rival, in my case, Magdeburg. Keep checking the disputed succession notification to see if Bohemia still don't have an heir. And I'm immediately gonna be declaring on another rival, this time it's Magdeburg and this time we're gonna show strength to get 100 points in each monarch point category. By this time you should also be unlocking the Imperial Ambition mission which requires for two electors to be voting for you. Now of course one of the two is you Brandenburg but Saxony should also be voting for you by this time. And of course we will take it, we do need that extra diplomat. 
and in my case, Bohemia have gotten a Hohen Zolern on their throne. Luckily, honestly, I didn't expect for it to happen, but I am gonna be claiming their throne now. And I'm gonna be looking to finish this war as soon as possible so I can declare on them. Hopefully my allies will help me. And now when piecing out Magdeburg, I am gonna be taking the show strength piece option. And there we go, that got us 100 of each monarch points as well as 20 prestige and 30 power projection. Now it's time to get ready to declare on Bohemia and hopefully Poland or Austria will help us out. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to get them in a PU with just us against them and their allies. And now I am gonna be hiring another mercenary company before this war with Bohemia just because they're pretty strong and they have a couple of allies too. And I'm just gonna be hiring these guys right here, the Rice Laufer. And as soon as they're done recruiting, I'm gonna be declaring on Bohemia. And now it's time to declare on Bohemia. In your case, you might be doing this a little earlier or a little later than me, or you might not be doing it at all. Like I said, this is just an added bonus. If you happen to get your dynasty on their throne, you can do this, but your game is not gonna go badly if you don't do this. This is just a plus. And thankfully, I can call in Poland with the promise of land. You should be able to call in Poland or Austria. Usually one of them will rival Bohemia and will want to join. So I am gonna call in Bohemia with the promise of land. Of course, I'm not gonna give them anything because I'm gonna be taking them in a personal union and this won't be such an easy war but you should be able to win it. Now you just need to focus on taking down Bohemia's forts without engaging their army too much and hopefully Poland and Lithuania will help out sufficiently and I just pieced out one of their allies right here Württemberg and I do have 85% war score which is apparently enough for me to take the union over them so we're gonna go into treaties union with Bohemia and I am gonna take as much money as I can Poland won't be angry with you because you're making them a subject instead of taking lands from them so even though we promised them land they're not gonna get angry with us. And just like that, we have Bohemia in a personal union. Of course, they are very angry and their liberty desire is 100, but this isn't something we can't handle. Now it's time to chill for a bit because we did get some aggressive expansion from this and we're still gonna wait for the fate of Neumark. It may have fired for you already and you may already have these two provinces, but either way, I'm gonna be explaining shortly what to do once that happens. And let me say again, even if you didn't get Bohemia in a PU, it's totally not a big deal. Just keep playing along. And I'm also gonna get rid of this mercenary company because I wanna save some money. Now during this time, you should also remove Frederick right here from leading an army because if he dies while Bohemia is disloyal, they're gonna break free. And it's been almost a year since I ended this war with Bohemia and the fate of Neumark just fired for me. And of course, we will select the make the Grandmaster a generous offer decision. It will cost us 100 ducats, which we don't have, but come on, this is the best trade deal in the history of trade deals. So I'm gonna take a couple of loans and there we go boom we have those two provinces now this also unlocks a mission which gives us claims on vorpommern and hinterpommern these two areas in pomerania right here basically these provinces and what we're going to be doing now immediately after getting these two provinces from the Teutons is declaring on Wolgast and there we go my diplomat is back and i'm immediately going to be declaring on them for stolp right here and there we go, I full sieged Wolgast, well almost full sieged. I pieced out their two allies right here and here's what we're gonna take in this war against Wolgast. Basically, we're gonna take the province of Stolp for ourselves and we're gonna make them our vassal and let them keep these four other provinces. We're also gonna take all their money. Now why this peace deal exactly? First off, if you have four provinces in the two Pomerania areas controlled by you or your subjects, you get to unlock the Pomeranian succession mission which will give us claims on these areas right here in Prussia. And we took the province of Stolp for ourselves so we can border the Teutonic Order. And now, just as we finished this war against Wolgast, we're gonna be coring that one province, we're gonna be moving our troops into position, and we're immediately gonna be declaring on the Teutonic Order. Now, by now, you should have enough favors with Poland if you've been currying favors, or if you don't have enough favors, you'll still be able to call them in with the promise of land. Now, I'm gonna call them in regularly without the promise of land, and just take the provinces of Danzig and Konigsberg for myself. But 
if you were calling them with the promise of land, you do need to give them the province of Kulm right here. It's very important that you give it to them so you can call them in your second war against the Teutons. And in my case, they are allied to Hungary 99%. This won't be the same in your case. They'll probably only be allied to the Livonians and Riga. It's just my luck that they're allied to Hungary. But with the help of Poland, I will be able to defeat them. And now I will be declaring on the Teutons for the conquest of Danzig and I will be calling in Poland. Like I said, you will be able to call in Poland whether it's with favors or with the promise of land where you will give them Kulm. Now the most important thing in this war is for you to siege down Konigsberg and Danzig. You don't care if Poland sieges down anything else, you have to siege down Danzig and Konigsberg because Poland might not transfer occupation of one of them to you. So my ruler just died and now we have Albert on the throne, the same guy who's actually the ruler of Ansbach. So basically this is the event to make Ansbach our junior partner. And now we basically have Ansbach and Beirut in a PU. Now, honestly, you can keep these guys if you want to. They do take up diplomatic slots. And do you really want to wait 50 years to integrate two provinces? I don't think so. So I'm just going to take this Ansbach succession mission. And as soon as this war is over, I'm going to abandon my union over Ansbach and Beirut or Beirut, whatever it's pronounced like. You know, this supposedly easy war against the Teutons turned into this like i said i'm 90 percent certain this is not something that's gonna happen in your game yours is gonna be fighting the teutons and the livonians sweden and hungary have allied the teutons in my game oh well at least i was able to call in austria and saxony too well that war took a lot longer than it needed to of course because i was fighting sweden and hungary as well who were allied to the teutons but either way once you are ready to piece them out here's what you're gonna take in this first war so we're only gonna take the province of danzig and konigsberg and we're gonna give Kulm to poland they're gonna like us for that so if you called in poland with favors in this war you don't have to give them Kulm. but if you called them in with the promise of land you do have to give this province to them. I called them in with favors but I'm still gonna give this province to them just because I want them to like me more and of course I am gonna humiliate the Teutons as well since they're my rival and I'm gonna take all their money. So these two for yourself and this one for Poland. At this point, aggressive expansion is pretty high because we did PU Bohemia, we vassalized and took provinces from Wolgast, and now we took provinces from the Teutons. So it's time to sit back and relax a bit and improve relations with outraged countries while we slightly fix up our economy. Oh yeah, and like I said, I am gonna abandon my unions with Ansbach and Bayreuth. I don't want OPMs taking up two Diplo slots for 50 years and I'm already way over my Diplo relations limit. It will cost prestige but I think Diplo points are more valuable than prestige. You don't have to abandon them if you don't want to. You can maybe grow them a bit over here but I am gonna be abandoning them. Now is also a good time to start spying on some of these smaller guys around you. Just look for the weakest one, in my case it's Mecklenburg, so I'm gonna start spying on them. But you can pick whichever nation that you border and is pretty weak. You could also rent out Condottieri, like I'm doing right now, for some extra cash. For your tier 2 reform, you should take Strength and Noble Privileges. While you're waiting for aggressive expansion to die down, you could even try and royal marry Burgundy. You can ally them too if you want to, in hopes of getting the Burgundian succession. In my case, Charles right here still doesn't have an heir, and we all know what happens when Charles doesn't have an heir. So I am gonna royal marry them. I will be losing out on one more Diplo point, but I think it's worth a shot, since we won't be doing any diplomatic idea groups anytime soon. During this time, you can also try and become emperor. You are already voting for yourself. Bohemia will vote for you once they become loyal. And if you improve relations with Saxony, they should also start voting for you. Now the only way you're gonna lose is if the other four electors all vote for Austria. It's worth a shot. Once you unlock Admin Tech 5 and you can unlock your first idea group, I recommend going for innovative or economic ideas. These are very helpful in building up our future small but very powerful nation in an economic sense and in a playing tall sense. And they have some excellent policies that will go really well with the military idea groups that we're gonna pick. I'm struggling for cash a little bit right now, so I'm gonna take economic, but you should take either one of these two. So innovative or economic. I'm gonna go for economic. And I will, of course, start focusing on admin points. Now that a few years have passed and aggressive expansion has died down a little bit, we can finally finish off Stettin to complete our claims in Pomerania. And I will be declaring on them right now. Once you finally defeated Stettin, <laughs> it 
took like three years for me because of this level three fort we are going to be full annexing them but we're going to be giving both provinces to Wolgast because after all we are working on an admin id group and we do need to save up those admin points so full annex but give it to Wolgast and take all their money now it's time to chill even more and wait for our truce with the Teutons to be up in about 5 years. During this time you should also get your relations with Wolgast up to above 190 and start integrating them. For your first stage ability you should of course take the Justified Wars one for that minus 10% aggressive expansion impact. We're gonna need it, we're in the HRE. So it's November 30th, 1468 and my truce against the Teutons expires tomorrow. Now it was very important to call in Poland in the first war against the Teutons. So basically their truce with them runs out on the same day and they can't declare on them which means that we will be taking all the land that we want. And now as soon as the truce runs out just like that we'll be immediately declaring on the Teutons once again. And this time I'm gonna declare for Marienburg and I would call in Poland but unfortunately they're not gonna come so actually I am gonna wait for Poland to end their war with Theodoro so I can call them in in this war once again so they're not declaring on the Teutons while I'm at peace with them. And it's only been a couple of months and Poland peaced out in their war so I am gonna be declaring on the Teutons now and calling them in. It is important to call them in like I said so they can't declare on them while we're at peace with them and we need them to beat Hungary. While I'm still in this war, my integration of Wolgast finished and I can unlock the Show of Strength mission which gives us some claims in Saxony. And this is everything I have claims on by now. And once you've beaten the Teutonic Order for a second time, basically we're gonna be taking as much as we can without getting too much aggressive expansion. In my case, I'm gonna be taking these three provinces right here along with all their money. And now it's once again time to wait for aggressive expansion to come down and try to grab some of our claims. During this time you should be focusing on building up your nation, constructing buildings with that minus 15 construction cost from our traditions as well as the minus 10% construction cost from economic ideas. And of course you should be building marketplaces in all the center of trade and estuary provinces and churches in all the high tax dev provinces. Here's everywhere that I've built marketplaces so far and I've only built a church in Berlin. So Charles in Burgundy just died and unfortunately they chose to become a junior partner of France. But you know if this happens to you you could save scum it and hope that they pick you next time. But unfortunately I didn't have that luck. They didn't pick me although it would have been sweet. Now we do have the Burgundian inheritance imperial incident where we have three choices basically we can pick that. We demand the lowlands be released as princes in the HRE. We demand that Austria declares on Burgundy with the restoration of Union CB and we just don't care. I'm gonna pick the we just don't care option but basically it's gonna be whatever Austria picks. And this is what they want. They want these guys to become part of the HRE. Now that a few years have gone by, it's time to declare on some of these nations which we have claims on over here from our missions and we're gonna be vassalizing them for less aggressive expansion. I'm gonna be declaring on Magdeburg. There's no real reason for this. You can declare on whichever one of these guys you want or you could even declare on these guys down here. It's your choice. And once you've fully occupied whichever of these tiny nations you're fighting, of course we are going to be vassalizing them and taking all their money. Now the reason we're vassalizing them is because, well, it's only 21 aggressive expansion if I vassalize Magdeburg, whereas it'll be 32 if I annex their provinces. So it's a no-brainer really. We're gonna vassalize them, I'm gonna feed them 2 or 3 more provinces, then annex them. And by about the 1480s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we've gotten the event to get these two provinces, then we vassalized Wolgast, then we declared on the Teutons, we declared on them again, we full annexed Stettin, we vassalized some nations over here, and possibly you've even gotten Bohemia in a PU just like me. And after this, it's just basically more of the same. Once your truce with the Teutons runs out, you're gonna declare on them again and full annex them. And you're gonna be waiting for aggressive expansion to die down, declaring on these nations which you have permanent claims on in North Germany as well as in Central Germany. You will be vassalizing some of them, feeding other guys to the guys you've vassalized and just basically juggling truces and aggressive expansion with tiny tiny conquests while focusing on building up the core of your nation. Stating everything you've conquered I will state these provinces once I'm done with economic ideas of course and you could even go for emperor like I said. For your next idea group I recommend taking quality or offensive ideas. These lead into the Prussian Space Marines even heavier and you will be getting some excellent modifiers to build up the quality of your troops. Basically we're not gonna have a very large army but we're gonna have a very powerful
powerful army. So offensive or quality for the second idea group. For your third idea group, you're gonna pick economic or innovative, whichever one you didn't pick for your first idea group. And then for your fourth one, you're gonna pick quality or offensive, whichever one you didn't pick for the second one. After that, you can take influence ideas, trade ideas, diplo ideas, and finish off the military ideas with quantity and defensive or defensive and aristocratic or aristocratic and quantity, whatever you like. For your government reforms, you're going to take centralized bureaucracy for tier three. For tier four, you should take nobles of the robe or administrative clergy. For tier five, you should take royal decree. For tier six, you should take let that And for tier seven, you should take political absolutism. And basically that's going to be the way you're going to be expanding up until the Protestant Reformation spawns and until you can get Tech 10. Now once the Protestant Reformation spawns in the late 1490s or early 1500s, you will of course be immediately becoming Protestant. So you go into the religion tab, click on convert and then Boom, convert to Protestant. And now you will be, of course, converting all your provinces. If you're lucky, the Protestant Reformation might spawn in your provinces, but either way, once you convert, another center of reformation will appear in your province. Then you have church power, where you can pick basically whatever you want. To focus on army quality, you're gonna take the discipline, morale, and manpower recovery speed. And to focus on economy, you can take production efficiency, idea cost, and dev cost. You know how Protestantism works. So now that you're Protestant, you just need admin tech 10 to form Prussia. And of course, as soon as you reach admin tech 10, you will be forming Prussia. And of course, you will be taking new traditions and ambitions where you gain the absolutely OP Prussian national ideas. You know them by now. Discipline, AE, impact, morale of armies plus 20%, infantry combat ability plus 20%, manpower plus 25%, dev cost, army tradition decay, and stuff like that. Basically, one of the best military focused national ideas in the game. And you will also have the amazing Prussian government where you can increase militarization to give you some good army stuff. And you do have the Prussian monarchy government type, which gives you minus 2 national rest, minus 0.02 monthly war exhaustion, minus 0.075 monthly autonomy change, plus 10 max absolutism, plus 3 monarch military skill, but minus 50 governing cap, so you really are meant to play tall as Prussia. One thing I did forget to mention is that once you fully annex the Teutonic Order as Brandenburg, it's time to break your alliance with Poland and start taking over the provinces which you have claims on. After that, you don't need Poland anymore once you've fully conquered the Teutonic Order. And if you're not sure if your game's gonna go like mine, or if you just want to continue the save from this date forward, this save file will be available to all tier 1 YouTube members in the save game discord channel. So become a member and join the discord. But that's pretty much it from this guide because after the 1480s your game will diverge too much for mine for me to be able to make a relevant guide for you. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that you would like to see me do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today and join the discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.